one of the most celebrated descriptions of the universe that has uh, come about uh, of, of late, and by of late I mean in the history of the scientific enterprise, is this surprising fact that so much of what governs our universe, the, the strength of various laws, for example, the mass of various particles, are so finely tuned that some theorists do suggest the multiverse we were talking about earlier to the extent that like, the only way to explain the fact that it could have been so many ways and is this way is that this is just one of many universes. Another suggestion for that, f- from that is to extrapolate and say, well, there must be some kind of necessary reason why these laws are the way they are. That's the kind of thing that the physicist is looking for. The third option is this sort of supernatural intelligence. Many people think that, I understand what you're saying, that the physicist can't go beyond the physical, but we can like extrapolate explanations from the physical data, right? Like in the same way that if I were to look at some evidence around me, if we all left this room and somebody came in and saw that there were some glasses on the table and saw that there was a book placed kind of in the middle of the table and all this kind of stuff, they they didn't see any human beings, they didn't see any agents, but they can just extrapolate from the arrangement of of the descriptions that they see of, of the way the room is, there must have been somebody there. In the same way, the physicists might not be able to sort of look beyond the material, but can they look at the strength of the of the strong and weak nuclear forces and the fact that if gravity was a tiny little bit stronger, the universe would have collapsed in on itself and a bit weaker and everything would have flown apart and think, I can't see any evidence of design directly, but I can extrapolate from that that there must be some kind of intelligence behind the universe. Yeah, so bear in mind, number one, Often people do say that if you change the value of the physical parameters Mm -hmm. just a little bit, the universe as we know it goes away. The problem with that is we can only do that analysis if you change the parameters by a little bit. If you allow the parameters to change by a lot of it, not a little bit, and you allow many of the parameters to change simultaneously, nobody can really say what that cosmos would be like. Hmm. And so it's possible that there are patches in parameter space where you would get different kinds of universes that perhaps would give rise to different living systems. And then each living system in its universe looks around and says, wow, this universe is so special. It must be that there's some kind of, you know, grand design that got us here. But they're all saying that in their own parameter space because they're all making this mistake of only looking in a small neighborhood around the point in parameter space where they exist. So that's Mm, point number one. And so part of it is we just don't really know enough to like make... If we, if we turned up gravity a little bit... And, and left everything else the same, I agree. But if we turned it up, like, to 11, <laughs> that, that, so, that somehow <laughs> right. that might... Yeah, but not what if you collapse? simultaneously turn up the repulsive force that might come from a universe yeah. with charged... Pro- I mean, you, yeah. it, it's a highly complex problem. And there might be something about turning up gravity, which necessarily also correlatively turns up this repulsive... Conceivably. So so it's just a fairly complicated problem that you don't want to dismiss too quickly by saying it all goes away unless it's precisely as we've seen. But it is the motivation for the multiverse, another motivation, because one explanation simply would be there are many, 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 many universes in which the parameters have all different values across those many universes. And in most of those universes, the conditions are not amenable to living systems like human beings. But in one of those or a small number of those universes, the conditions are amenable. And of course, we're in one of those universes because we could not exist in any of the others because the conditions are not correct. You know, the analogy is if you go into a a clothing shop and you want to buy a sports coat, and you say, I want to buy a sports coat, and you see only one on the rack, and the person brings it over, and it fits you perfectly. You're like, wow, that is so fortunate that it was just the right size to fit me. Mm. But if you go into an actual clothing shop, when there's hundreds of different sports jackets on the rack of all different sizes, when the person comes and brings you one that fits, you're not surprised. Of course, there's one among the many that works for you. Yep. 
And so if you have many jackets, it's obvious why one will fit. If you have many universes, it's also pretty obvious why one will fit the conditions necessary to our existence. And so it is a natural way of avoiding the problem that you're making reference to. The specialness of this universe goes away if it's one of a grand collection of possibilities. Yeah. Uh, if I went into a shop and they had a sports jacket in just my size, I'd feel pretty, pretty special. I'd feel pretty chuffed about that. If I discovered that actually they'd gone into the back and picked from a billion different possible suit jacket sizes, uh, I'd be a little bit, I'd be a little disappointed by that. I'd be kind of upset. Uh, do you feel a bit nihilistic at the prospect that, that it seems amazing, everything is perfectly tuned for us, and but actually... Maybe not. Maybe we just happen to be in one of billions of universes. I guess that's not where my self-worth comes from. You know, I sort of don't look at the specialness of yeah. the universe or my place within that special universe. Rather, what fires me up is the fact that a collection of particles called a human brain, which is all that we are, collections of particles, can coalesce through an evolutionary dynamics to yield a structure that can think and feel and love and emote and create and illuminate and figure out quantum mechanics and figure out general relativity and come up with the idea of a multiverse and describe black holes and predict the magnetic moment of the electron. And that, to me, is the amazing thing, that matter, not infused with any divine force, not, in my view, structured by some divine plan, can through the bare laws of physics come together and do what it does. Mm. It's it's definitely marvelous. It I, I do think it sort of doesn't offer consolation in the way that that feeling special does. Because I feel like oftentimes people conflate the idea of something being amazing with something being like meaningful. You know, people people like to say things like okay, I, I, I believe that there is just the universe, but when I look at a beautiful night sky, I'm filled with awe and wonder. And that might be true, but it doesn't fill you with that sense of, of belonging in the same way. If anything, like one person looks at the universe and thinks it's so grand and so brilliant that, man, I slot right into this and they find their sense of belonging. Or some people look at the universe, they look at the same thing and they say, gosh, this is also also big and I'm just in a tiny little random neighborhood. Like, oh, I, I, I have no place here. I'm just randomly here. Like, which of those do you identify with more when, both. when you look at the universe? They're both true. Right. I mean, I fundamentally believe that there is no cosmic purpose. There is no cosmic meaning. I do believe, and I'm open as we discuss to other ideas ultimately replacing this perspective if it made mm -hmm. sense and if there is evidence, but I fundamentally believe that we are the product of physical processes and that we are physical structures and that these physical structures just come together for a brief moment of time and then we disperse. And for that brief moment of time, can I feel alone and nihilistic? Yes. Can I feel connected and thrilled? Yes. Can I hold both of those ideas in mind simultaneously? Yes, mm -hmm. and I do. And so, yes, at times do I feel completely at sea in this gigantic cosmos, crawling around on this nondescript planet, going around this ordinary star in the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy? Yes. Can that make you feel small and lacking some sense of purpose? For sure. But at the same time, when I think about the fact that we've developed these mathematical ideas that describe that reality. It gives me a feeling of connection to that reality. I feel closer to the universe when I have a deep description that at least approximates some of the processes that take place. General relativity makes me feel closer to the cosmos, as does quantum mechanics. Mm. And so, yes, alone, and yes, connected, all together in one human mind that somehow is able to grapple with these ideas. This multiverse situation that we were talking about before, do we have good reason to think that it might be the case outside of A, its possibility, and B, the way that it kind of conveniently does away with the trouble of things like fine-tuning or the, the trillions of ways that string theory dimensions could be folded in on themselves? Because, like, 
you imagined walking into a jacket shop and finding one that was perfect. And I, I'm imagining walking into a jacket shop and, 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 and it's just like a tiny little, little store you know, somewhere in, somewhere in New York on like the second floor. Right. And it just has a few jackets and, and a few pairs of trousers. And I try on this jacket and it is like perfect. I mean, it's the exact shade of blue that I was looking for. I send it to my camera guy and he does the little hex code and he's like, man, this is like exactly the right color temperature. The the sleeves are the perfect length, like uncannily perfect. Like everything is great. It's even got like a name tag from the previous owner that says Alex on it just by pure. And I think, man, this is absolutely unbelievable. I'm saying to my friend, this is unbelievable. I can't believe every single time I look at it, something new that just, just unfathomably coincidental. And the friend says, okay, this is amazing. I, what must have happened is that there are actually like an infinite number of jackets that are sort of sad in the back. And every time somebody comes into the shop, they sort of bring one out by chance and hope that it's a match. And I suppose we must also have sort of existed in New York for an infinite amount of time so that this guarantees that at least once this goes right. And of course, you're going to be the one that gets it right, because otherwise you wouldn't be having this amazing right. experience. Compared to just what I naively experience, which is like one room and a jacket which fits perfectly, I would I would basically ask that friend to give me more reason outside of the convenience of explaining this coincidence to believe in that infinite set of jackets to to think that yeah. it's actually true right i, I, I mean and in, in the end of the day that's really what we do we try to explain the confluence of data that seems to lock together with such a gratifying and impressive cohesion just like your perfect jacket you know inscribed in just the right way and this is that jacket right there. It's, it's beautiful i i agree with your cameraman and, and so what we try to do is to write down equations that will give us some insight into how it could be that there's a process that starts in the big bang and results in the things that we are now experiencing mm -hmm. now are there certain things that might be pure coincidence like, could it be pure coincidence that the gravitational constant and the electromagnetic force have just the right values to yield the qualities that allow us to exist? It could be coincidental. It could be really causative. It could have been, had the values been different, they would have caused something else. Mm. And that something else, if it had consciousness, might be in the same quandary saying, why were the constants just the right value to allow me to exist? And yet they'd be different than the constants that we have. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be careful about seeing things and being impressed at their uniqueness mm -hmm. when they might not be unique and impressed at how they are designed when they may not be designed. They simply may be what they are and you are the result of those features. They weren't set in order to get you to exist. They were set maybe by some random process and you are the output of that random process. Mm -hmm. What we do as conscious beings, we tend to look at our environment and try to explain it in terms that somehow give us a, a narrative, a story. And we love stories that somehow have a purpose. But these stories may not have a purpose. It may just be random events with random numbers that yield, based on their structure, certain outputs. And we may be the output of those random qualities. If you enjoyed that clip, you can watch the full episode with Brian Green by clicking the link on your screen. To support my work and get early ad-free access to videos, subscribe to my Substack at alexoconnor.com. Thanks for watching.